was his best phrase. Maybe the Clint Dempsey, like, you don't know where I'm from, dog. That might be it. It's <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> he was almost player of the year, but his greatest contribution to English football is, you don't, you don't know, know where I'm from, from dog. dog. Exactly. What a delight it is to be face to face with one of my favorite blokes in all of American football, a gent I greatly admire, a 23 year old straight out of Hoover, Alabama, who's walked a pioneering pathway from the deep south via Bavaria to that passionate footballing hotbed in South London. It's a joy to welcome US men's national team, Crystal Palace centre back, Bama Beckenbauer, all round great human being. It's Mr. Chris Richards. Hey, Rod. <laughs> Chris, it is so lovely to be with you. We sit here in Detroit City, Hitsville, USA, with a new Premier League season lying right open wide before us. And you're on our show. A couple of months ago, we talked about your incredible life journey. I strongly urge viewers to give that a listen because it's truly inspirational. But today, we asked our great friends of the pod to ask you their biggest, baddest questions. They flooded us with them. I'm just the messenger, Chris. Are you ready for a dozen hot ones? Let's do it. Oh, we're going to dive in. First up, Fred Swift from Portland, Maine. Chris, could Lionel Messi do it on a cold, wet and windy Wednesday at Selhurst Park? Ah, I think he could. He did it in Miami, so I feel like he could, he could probably do it at Selhurst on a, a cold, windy night. I think he could. And Morgan Lopez says you're a footballer who's played in the heat of Dallas, the pressure cooker of Bayern, the passionate crucible of Palace. What is the biggest difference about Premier League football that we couch warriors who just watch it could not understand? I think the biggest thing that the Premier League has is that there's no, there's no bottom teams. Any team could be any other team on any given day. Um, and Everton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. Even teams that are considered towards the bottom of the table are teams that in most other leagues in the world would definitely be top of the table. So um, the Premier League is definitely, definitely, definitely the most competitive league that I've played in so far. What's it been like for you, a gen who left MLS at 18, to see Lionel Messi Ray Hudson's Argentinian love child swagger into Miami and have every single move become global news on and off the field. You've been watching that as an American and been like, wow, how have you experienced it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I invested in a inner Miami jersey recently. <laughs> um, yeah, I had to. Uh, but it's, By it's, the way, you probably had to use all your influence just to get one. Yeah, it took a lot. Not it easy. took a lot. <laughs> They're all sold out. But uh, it's really cool. It's really refreshing to see um, players coming over, playing the MLS, guys like Messi and Busquets. Who, well, Miami's bottom of the league, but uh, they have Busquets and Messi on their team. So, a kid who grew up watching MLS playing in it, are you like, what is it? Like, how do you understand it even? When I left home, Atlanta United wasn't even a team, and now, like I said, you have some of the best footballers in the world playing in MLS, which is crazy to me. But uh, like I said, it's really refreshing. It's really great to see. I mean, my brother, he's 11 years old, and seeing some of his idols playing in a league that's, you know or at least at a team that's like a two-hour flight from you, is, uh, I think it's really inspiring for him. God, I bet you're telling all his mates, my brother's got a messy shirt from yeah. into Miami. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Connected question from Julia Lewin in Hyde Park, Chicago. What's harder, cold Premier League night away at arrival or a humid CONCACAF qualifier in hostile territory? Two very different kinds of knife fight, Chris Richards. Definitely. Uh... I'd say humid CONCACAF game. CONCACAF isn't known for necessarily having the best conditions, uh, especially the pitches. And so I think the worst one that I experienced was Panama away. And um, that was just an experience. Like it was, I think we went down 1-0 pretty early. And then uh, towards the end of the game, we started throwing like footballs on the field, started throwing like fireworks. So, like it was just one of those games where you can't really like reciprocate that type of environment. So I think my answer would definitely be a uh, CONCACAF away game. No matter what the question is, the answer is always CONCACAF. Has to be. At Zion Zion, what has going up against Eberet Chiesa every day in training done for your game? What is the move he does that's hardest to defend? I won't tell you what move because then people might find it out. But uh, I think you've seen over probably the last, the second half of the season last year, Ebbs was playing with a lot of confidence. And when he's playing with confidence, he's a really tough guy to, to defend. And he does some things where you're like, you know, you can't even imagine it, but he's just so creative. It's just, it comes natural to him. I think training against the best, uh, it definitely elevates your game. I mean, if you're playing against guys like Ebbs uh, day in and day out, it should make the game on the weekend a bit easier for you. So he definitely brings a, a quality to the team that um, not just helps us attacking, but also helps us defenders, um, because like I said, we're playing against uh, one of the best. From at Apple 10, your favorite US women's national team player? I'd probably say Lindsey Horan. 
I met her actually at Tottenham Stadium. Uh, we watched the NFL games together, so that was pretty cool to meet Brendan her. Brendan Hunt. Yeah, exactly, with, with the guys from Ted Lasso. <laughs> uh, so it was really cool to meet her, and uh, she's a baller. Question from David Beatty, Portland, Oregon. Who's older, Roy Hodgson or Tim Ream? <laughs> you would think Tim, the way that he talks, he's, he's very <laughs> wise for a 35-year-old. Uh, I think he's 35. He says he's 35. Right. Yeah, sums, sums up. But uh, he has a lot of knowledge that you would not expect from a guy that age. Roy Hodgson is the same age as Tim Ream's oldest kid, I think. <laughs> yeah, Tim's oldest kid is like driving now. I, was like, uh, I think he's been driving for about 35 years. Yeah, that's Late scary. in Congress from Salt Lake City, Utah. If Chris Richards could sign any one of his American international teammates for Crystal Palace, who would he choose and why? Uh, I'd probably say Jedi. You know, he's, he's in London already, so it wouldn't be too big of a move for him. So you don't want exactly, to you know, I don't want to inconvenience my boys, exactly. <laughs> uh, we play on the same side together, so, you know, it's a good chemistry between us. But yeah, I think I'd probably bring Jedi over. Guzan, the yeah. answer's always <laughs> Guzan. Goosey goat. Richard Beeler in Racine, Wisconsin. Jesse Marsh, country baby. Chris, being from Birmingham, Alabama, what is the biggest contrast to life in London? Follow up, has he visited Big Brum, the OG Birmingham, the middle of England? I have visited. Uh, actually, Daryl DK was playing, he's playing at West Brom, so uh, been around there a little bit. Um, you went to the same flight? Yeah, I saw, we, uh, we went and also I think Austin Trusty was playing as well, so. Austin Trusty built Birmingham. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have a lot of connections there now. What's the biggest contrast to life for you in London? I'd probably say the driving. Um, you know, <laughs> in Birmingham, we have these huge roads where you're driving like pickup trucks and things like that. And then you get to London and uh, you can't park anywhere. You know, you're driving on the other side of the road. You have to pay a tax to drive into the city. So in Birmingham, it's just like, man, you drive wherever you want to. Don't worry about it. You'll whenever find parking. Whenever you want, however exactly. you want. <laughs> so um, no, I think for sure, I'd say the driving. Let's talk about your experience of touring the United States with Mighty Crystal Palace. Steve Friend from Croydon, South London says, can you give us one great story about your teammates experiencing America, the food, the culture, the heat? I'd say the food, I'd probably start off with just the deep dish pizza. You stole that video. <laughs> yeah, you know, had to do it. I had to. <laughs> um, they'd heard about deep dish pizza, but I think once the actual like piece of pizza was on their plate and you could hear it like how heavy it was, they were like, "Whoa! Like this, this can only happen in America." Um, so it was heavy. Even for me, it was heavy. So I know that they were dying. There's a big debate about whether deep dish pizza is actually strictly pizza or whether it's really casserole. Hmm. I never thought about that. Which is somewhat mind blowing. I think rationally it's a latter, emotionally for me. But the amazing thing is, you told me you'd never even been to Chicago before. Mm -mm, never. And they're all expecting you to like be the guide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, they asked me about the bean. I was like, I don't know. It's just like a, it's a bean. Like it's a reflective bean. And uh, they were like, Chris, he knows everything. Yeah, they're like, what, what's its purpose? I was like, oh no, it just looks good. I guess, I guess I'm not the, the best tour guide for the Midwest. <sighs> Follow up from Keely J. Do you feel pressure to be a good host while they are here? I wouldn't necessarily say pressure. I mean, these guys, uh, you can't really take them too seriously. Uh, it's a good group of guys, but they joke around a lot. They get a little bit of stick for it, but I try not to take it too seriously. Grace Congleton from the 954 Fort Lauderdale FLA. Who does the best American accent on the entire Crystal Palace team? I'd say Joel Ward. I think because he has family that lives in, uh, I think, North Carolina. And so he spent a few summers with them. And so he does a pretty good, pretty good uh, American accent. What's his best phrase? <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe the Clint Dempsey, like, you don't know where I'm from, dog. That might be it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's Clint's lasting concert. Exactly. It's called Bangers. Clint has scored, like, he was almost player of the year. But his greatest contribution to English football is, you don't you know, know where I'm from, from dog. dog. Exactly. America. Add John Feng Won. What, you, what did you do when you were a bit homesick in South London for a bit of the United States? To be fair, in London, I haven't really gotten too homesick because I think for me, it's like the closest thing to home that's not home, I guess. Um, London's a place where you can find a lot of things that you have in the States over there. It might be a lesser version of it, but you can definitely find some things that, uh, that you can relate to. I'm feeling really homesick. I might just go hang out with Jedi, you know, even though he still has the English accent, I think it's just good to... <laughs> To be around somebody who you played with for a little bit and um, who you shared some experiences with. I haven't just cheer you up with some piano action. Yeah, I haven't bit, quite got a little, little bit of magic. Yeah, I haven't quite got on the piano yet, uh, <laughs> but he might teach me a card trick here or there. A lot of food questions, Chris Richards. I don't know if you consider yourself 
a food driven kind of gentleman, but Delo smelts, that could only be in America. We don't have Delo smelts is in England from Durham, North Carolina says, what's your favorite Southern comfort meal? I'd probably say breakfast, you know, like I think like biscuits and gravy, eggs, bacon, maybe even like blueberry pancakes, pretty decent. And then I know it's breakfast, so I'm thinking more brunch-ish time than afterwards get like a peach cobbler or something like that <sighs> with a scoop of ice cream on top. I love ice cream. you. Arm M. Alcor, best barbecue in Bama. And what are you ordering? I'd probably say Dreamland barbecue. Dreamland barbecue, get like a, a rack of ribs. Yeah, just some good ribs. Son. Now I'm really hungry. A good rack of ribs from Dreamland sounds good right now. Sauce, juke joint. Yeah. Cool pork plate, uh, baby. Oh, All yeah. the way. The follow up comes from Nick Klecko, Sacramento, California. Are there any American Southern cooking food gems in London? Have you found any good barbecue spots there? I've seen them on TikTok, but I haven't gone to them yet. <laughs> TikTok like, gives me everything. But... Probably, probably as close as you want to get to them to be candid yeah. anything as good as a bacon cheeseburger at sam super sandwiches in your hometown that's a good shout i don't think some local knowledge yeah there, there is some local knowledge there i don't think there's anything much better oh, can i give a good shout out to the tasty jerk which is an unbelievable shack minutes from selhurst park the jerk chicken legs there almost not quite but almost as good as the football when you get to the <laughs> match bennett drudge in boise this is one I've actually wondered about. Do you support an SEC football team? Have you ever yelled Roll Tide or War Eagle at an opponent after a great tackle? <laughs> I haven't actually yelled Roll Tide to anybody, but uh, I am a Roll Tide fan, Alabama. You are? Yeah, my dad's an Auburn fan, so it causes a bit of tension in the house. Every time you do something and we'll tweet out Roll Tide, people will be like, no, Chris is an Auburn guy. Nah, nah. Whenever we do a War Eagle, they're like, Chris is pure Bama. <laughs> no, nah, I'm Alabama through and through. Oh, how did you make the decision? What was it that turned it? So growing up, you have to make a decision early. Um, and I have a good friend who went to university, who played football at the University of Alabama, uh, Marlon Humphrey. He plays for the, the Ravens now. We grew up together, we ran track, and his dad actually went to Alabama. And so it was like one of those things where you have to adopt one from very early and you can't switch, you have to stick with it. So uh, I'm Alabama, my dad's Auburn, uh, and that's it. Can I say Chris Richards loves a winner? I do, I love a winner. Roger, ben <laughs> Roger Bennett, Everton fan, loves Auburn. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Love to lose, baby. <laughs> Vanessa Gross from Hell's Kitchen, New York City. You recently scored your first international goal, a thumping header to lead the United States to Nations League glory. Chris, how, this is her question. How often do you dream about it for real in your dreams? It was crazy. I actually dreamt about it the night before. I was, uh, what? It was one of those things where I was like, man, how great would it be for me to score like you know, my first goal for the national team, like in a final, and then it was Father's Day and my dad was in the crowd. So I was like, oh, it was just like the perfect storm, you know? And like, I do this thing before a game where I always visualize what I want to happen. But I remember like specifically dreaming about it that night. And uh, it was just cool that it Do you remember the actual dream? Just, I remember going up for a header. Cause I mean, that's probably the only time I'm going to score a goal. It wasn't being a 40 yard, just curl a right nah, nah, the Nah, nah, <laughs> I think my dreams are a bit realistic. <laughs> but um, no, nah, I had a dream about it the night before and, uh, yeah, it was just, like I said, it was like the perfect day. Do you have a lot of football dreams, Chris? Because I was speaking to US women's fullback, Emily Fox. She told me she has a repeat stress dream in which she's playing on a field filled with sludge. She can't run through it. She can barely move. And you don't really have to be Freud to understand that one. Yeah. Do you, do you dream a lot about football? I'd say I dream more about certain actions I'm going to do in the game. And usually it happens the day before the game. Because uh, it's like my brain telling me, like, pretty much to get ready. Um, I haven't quite had a stress dream like that, uh, but most of them are just actions that I want to see happen the next day. I love you, the way you approach it. Yours are like positive, optimistic, joyous. Yeah. God, be like Chris Richards, <laughs> not, uh, not like uh, Roger Bennett. Ian Fieldston, Birmingham, Alabama. Chris, you are an inspiration to all of us football lovers in your hometown. What's your favorite memory <laughs> of the raucous celebrations after Nations League victory in that locker room? Ah, probably the champagne shower. I think that was, there's like a, a clip, I took it on my GoPro actually, but I know it's somewhere out there. Um, and it was Christian, he was holding the trophy and standing up on a table like this and everybody was just spraying him. And it was just, it was a great moment, a great memory. And uh, also I think 
the Western slip and slide was a close second. Yeah, I was going to tell us what it was like for you to see Christian Pulisic being tossed like a bowling ball <laughs> across that champagne slick floor. Yeah, no, that was fun because he's one of the smaller guys on the team. So he was like the perfect, <laughs> he was the perfect uh, victim for that. But celebration after a game like that was uh, definitely, definitely one to remember. I got the feeling after all the chaos in the wake of the World Cup, the turbulence, it just felt so bloody good for you all to be together again, to win again and just thrive together. Was that what it felt like in that moment? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think since the World Cup, I feel like there's been a lot of background talk about everything, whether it's the coaching, just kind of how young and inexperienced we are. I think for us to go out in Nations League and prove to everybody that, you know, regardless of what's going on in the background, that we're going to go out there and kill it. I think it was just kind of like a breath of fresh air because we knew that we had it in us, but it was just a matter of us showing it because we hadn't really been into a camp since then. Two more and I'm going to let you go. Kevin Bracey, London, England. The United States players, do you talk about transfers in the U.S. men's national team WhatsApp? And is that how Musa and Pulisic to AC Milan happens? We've got a few agents on our team. Uh, you know, we, uh, <laughs> like, especially when uh, after Nations League, they're like, hey, you know, you should come here, you should come here. Um, is the speculation true, this and that? And so, um, like I said, we have, a few, we have a few insider agents that are working behind the scenes for us. Question for me to finish. When you came on last time, you talked to us about how you have an incredible life habit, and I love it, of writing your goals on post-it notes. The new season lies ahead of us. Mm. What's written on your post-it for this season with Crystal Palace, Chris? Stay healthy, that's a big one. Start as many games as possible, and I'll start more games than I did last year. And to finish higher than we did last year. Like I said, as an American, I feel like we're very optimistic, and so, um, but I think any club wants to, wants to play European football, so I mean, I think that definitely would be on my list is to hopefully qualify for a European spot because, I mean, even the first half of last year, before the World Cup break, we were pretty high up in the table. So if we continue this season like we finished last season, I think uh, we're going to be a really hard team to play. Chris Richards, to you, to more positive bloody dreams and even more optimistic realities. Courage. Thank you. Subscribe here for more Men in Blazers videos and courage. Go, go, go.